First, let me introduce myself. My name is Amar, and I have been working as a operations manager in Viscan. I have been working in Viscan for past eight years, so quite a long time. Uh, today, we are talking about cybersecurity and e-commerce. Uh, what can happen? What's the worst case scenario? How can you protect it against it? Uh, what can you do in your daily life uh, that can help you? prevent possible security issues in the future and so on. Uh, so this is a short introduction about what we are going to talk today. First of foremost, uh, we are going to talk about ransomware attacks. Uh, we are going to talk then uh, about how the opportunity makes a thief. Uh, after that, uh, we will focus a bit on the security incident that we had in the past summer. And then, um, uh, in the end, we'll talk about security as a shared responsibility, about what we can do with what we are doing and what you can do uh, to help us to protect your data and your customers better. With that said, let's kick in into the ransomware attacks. Um, everyone has heard about ransomware attacks and everyone knows what they do. They're very simplified, uh, manage to get into your computers or your systems lock everything and then demand a ransom for uh, unlock key that may or may not work and so on. Uh, if we take a look what uh, a simple, very simplified picture of one ransomware attack, uh, how it looks like for the company, it always introduces a financial loss. Uh, it has a big operational impact as uh, everything is affected uh, from uh, customer service operations to everything else. Um, almost certainly include uh, data loss. In a uh, few, in, in, in recent history, it's uh, become a practice as well at to be, uh, to include theft as well. So they don't just lock your data, but they exfiltrate it and they have uh, asked, they ask for ransom for first and foremost, uh, unlock it and then uh, if you don't want to pay for unlocking, then they demand ransom for not releasing the documents or your data uh, on the internet. And then, of course, we have reputational damage. Uh, financial loss is quite bad because uh, just in the past year, so 2023, uh, about 85% of attacks uh, that happened happened in the Europe. So 85 of global uh, attacks happened in Europe, and Sweden stands for one third. All of, all of that. Uh, also, 2023 was one of the most devastating years uh, regarding to the ransomware attacks because it's the first year there that we know that 1.1 uh, billion of uh, US dollars has been paid as a ransom to the attackers, which is really bad. Um, ransomware usually. Uh, people think when, when we talk about transfer, oh, we have backups, but uh, most of people don't understand how attackers think and uh, what they do. Uh, the goal of the, their attack is never to get in uh, and just lock everything and get out. They are very methodical when they get in uh, what they are doing because this is a business for them and they are thinking uh, about it in that way. So they look, first manage to get in manage to get persistence so that you cannot kick them out that easily uh, or find them and then they start looking how your business operates what do you do how many servers you have what computers you have on that and then they start uh, infecting those computers and servers and then after a few months when they have been in and they have collected a lot of information about you and your business then they start doing the damage like encrypting stuff and so on but has they already have been inside for such a long time. You have the issue where you don't have reliable backups anymore uh, if you haven't done your uh, backup strategies properly. And you think, okay, but then we are going to just restore backups, not big deal, but it usually doesn't work that way. Um, if we look at operational impact, operational impact um, causes always downtime. And uh, focus at the operational impact is the service disruption. Uh, the more you're impacted, the more you 
laying down, they, the more you're willing to pay. Unfortunately, that's how it goes. Uh, nearly 80%, this is a very interesting fact, but nearly 80% uh, of the organization that have paid for the ransomware uh, unlocking or for the keys have been, uh, <laughs> have been breached again. So it really doesn't, uh, it doesn't pay uh, to pay them at all. Then we have also uh, regulation consequences that are also part of the operational impact. Uh, we have in, this, in the Europe, we have GDPR, uh, we have local laws. For example, in Sweden, we have IMI, uh, which uh, sets clear set of rules with backing of the GBD, GDPR, what you have to do in case that you are attacked, you have 70 hour breach window where you need to notify them, notify the customers and so on. So it's, it can be very, very uh, cost uh, uh, to the company in, in case of the breach. Then we have also reputational damage. Uh, you have loss of customer trust. Uh, unfortunately, bad news are spread much faster than, uh, than the good news. You have negative publicity. You have a customer churn where the customers, uh, because of the attack or because how you handle it, are uh, choosing to move somewhere else. Uh, then you have impact on the partnerships, investments and stuff like that. And as well, uh, you might have a problem with the uh, um, attracting talents, uh, people that will uh, want to work with you. Um, if we take a look how bad it can be, uh, I listed only a few of the attacks uh, that are quite big uh, and everyone has heard about them. But the tactics of ransomware, uh, they continue to evolve. They are not as, as they were simple as they were before. They are using more sophisticated methods uh, to find holes and to breach your defenses. Previous ransomers were more or less uh, spray and pray type of attacks, like scan the whole internet, scan the whole segments of the networks and try to find something and uh, exploit it. But now they are much more sophisticated, especially when we uh, look at the war in uh, Ukraine uh, with Russia and so on. So a lot of it has to do with the groups that are uh, on one or other side and so on. If we uh, for example, look at the time of, of uh, this attack that I outlined. In the 2017, we have Maesk, which is a uh, Danish shipping giant. You all, were, all have probably heard about them. You have seen containers on the tra trucks and so on. Uh, they have lost about 300 millions in two weeks because of the ransomware attack. They were attacked by... Uh, with the help of the attack called NotPetya. Uh, and that attack uh, originated from Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine and France and Germany were attacked by that uh, ransomware. Uh, it was also one uh, particular ransomware, very bad one, because it's called Wiperware, uh, where the goal is not just to encrypt your data, it's uh, to delete it and make it unrecoverable uh, in any way, even with, if, if you have a key. Uh, Ukraine, Germany and, and France were attacked by that uh, ransomware, but 80% of attacks were uh, actually uh, in Ukraine. And the goal was to disrupt all the private and public energy sector uh, companies. After that, we have uh, one of the biggest exchanges on the at that time. Uh, on the internet, uh, TravelX, which have been hit by real ransomware. Um, they managed, um, when they got their files locked, uh, they received ransomware um, uh, demand for $5 million. Uh, they managed to negotiate it to $2.3 million. But in the end, uh, because of the this attack uh, and the damage that it caused to them, they uh, were forced to uh, oh, put the company into administration in 2020. After that, we have a Costa Rica attack. Uh, the the Conti ransomware gang attacked the Costa Rica uh, country uh, and the government institutions. First, uh, by uh, infecting the financial ministry, uh, ministry of financial uh, finance, 
uh, and they use, use the compromised credentials that they found on the internet for that. After that, they managed to spread to the rest of the government. So it caused the government, uh, it caused the government to shut down, and uh, they couldn't pay out uh, the salaries or any any kind of social services. Uh, they were not uh, available. So it's estimated that the, that attack cost about ten million dollars per day, and it went for I mean almost two months, I think. Uh, Attacker, the previous one uh, in the Ukraine, estimated is estimated that took uh, that cost around ten billion dollars um, globally, but it's very hard to know. Uh, and then, yeah, I think I have a, I think I have a error in the in the last. Uh, Part of the timeline, my bad, sorry. Uh, but the last attack was uh, something that we already, all, all of us have heard about and seen in Sweden. Theater was attacked, and the rough estimate uh, is that the cost of that attack is at the moment around 1.2 billion uh, Swedish crowns uh, because it's really big and it has affected a lot of both private companies, but a lot of the public sectors, a lot of the com municipalities and so on so that one is also really bad when we talk about attacks and how they start we we usually say that the opportunity makes a thief uh, and what that means that means that if we would divide attacks to two groups uh, we could say that there are opportunistic opportunity, opportunity uh, sorry can't speak so early in the morning but we have opportunist attacks uh, and those are yeah much more um uh that those are the type of the attacks that we see usually mostly on the on the internet that someone has been affecting so on but then we have the second group which is much more uh sophisticated and uh, much more dangerous which are uh targeted attacks and i will talk about both of them but if we focus on opportunist attacks we have their random targeting of of the uh, because effort on those attacks is very low. Um, attackers are trying to scan a vast of the internet. They are using automatic automatic scanning or different automatic tools uh, to scan uh, large organizations, uh, their IP segments, or the internet. And then they are trying to find low hanging fruits. They are trying to find unpatched servers, unpatched firewalls, uh, anything that they can exploit easily. They usually don't uh, spend a lot of time uh, if they find any any resistance. It's much easier just to pick another target. Uh, common examples of these attacks are mass phishing campaigns, um, brute forcing uh, of the servers, then, for example, also uh, drive-by downloads where they infect uh, update servers at your company and then all computers updates from receive updates from them from that computer and then uh, that way they get infected uh, these attacks based by based on the industry where you're at uh, based on the company size and everything else or between approximately 80 and 90 percent of the all attacks on the on the internet uh, then we have these that are much more uh dangerous targeted attacks and they are dangerous because they are very specific so in this case you are the target and that means that the resources for it are much higher and the stakes are much higher uh, techniques used are also tailored for you uh, they perform advanced reconnaissance where they uh, try to find as much information about your company about the techniques you're using services that you're using suppliers uh, everything that can be of any use and use that information for the attack uh, through the phishing campaigns spear phishing campaigns where they you know you receive mail with a link but that mail is so crafted that it's something that you use something that you expect that you will receive and so on so you don't think too much about it and just believe it's a it's a legit mail and then you get infected or um or they try to hack your service by using the techniques that you have 
Uh, they are very dangerous because the the focus here is persistence, where they try to uh, make a foothold in your server park, in your servers, and uh, stay undetected for a long time. So if you stop them from one server and think you you got rid of them, they are back from the another server and so on. So it, it's very dangerous type of attack. If we talk about uh, e-commerce and attacks of e-commerce, I mean, you all of you have seen these um, misconceptions uh, in the on the Wiscan User Summit 2023. Uh, we said that uh, hackers these days do not hack; they just log in, and unfortunately, this is a uh, this is a true. Uh, and most of people think it won't happen to me or. Uh, I don't have anything to hide and stuff like that, but we all do. Uh, if we take a look at the risk and security incident uh, and what happened to us. So one of our customers uh, has been uh, in some way, uh, it's very hard to know how, uh, lost or got hacked or got uh, his credentials for his mailbox leak and usually when credentials for the, for the mailbox leaks it's by some third party that gets uh, breached uh, and then uh, they manage to crack the passwords and then they sell them as a big password list on the on the with the accounts that they uh, belongs to on the dark web uh, then the big uh, hacking groups will buy those accounts and see the targets from them, see if they are still active and so on, and then start working with those. Uh, that was the case here. They bought access, uh, so they bought the credentials for his account, and they managed to log into the, his account, and uh, they could. They had a few months to, to go through and see uh, what uh, he's doing and everything else regarding the business where he is in. Uh, they managed to breach his personal uh, social network accounts, uh, social media accounts, and that was uh, one of the first triggers for him that something is amiss, uh, but he managed to get those accounts back, change password there and so on. But this means also that, they prob that he probably used the uh, same password all over the place, so password using, which is really bad. Then in 2023, on Wisconsin User Summit, we uh head of a presentation where we said that the hackers don't hack anymore they mostly log in and uh in the already in march the, the this customer has experienced this uh the customer in the question also had the possibility to have two-factor authentication on uh so we offered that from uh from the quite long time back but he refused it as a uh, it's a big hassle that you need to yeah it's the, the login process gets longer and it's, it's it was a hassle um when the attackers scanned through his mailbox they found a credential to this back office they managed to get in and start looking uh, how it looks like start learning about the, our system uh, our back office how it works and so on and then in the end of may uh, when they tried to do something from the back office they tried to escalate privileges, try to do dump accounts or, and do, do really bad stuff. That's where we caught them. Um, and that triggered a big security instant response that we did with the help of Visma uh, and the Visma security team uh, to remove them. Uh, we found persistent tracks that uh, persistence. Uh, we found them on a, uh, uh, tries that leave persistence uh, behind them to, to so they can be able to log in. But we managed to clear all the system and we didn't have any data loss. So we were very lucky here. Uh, here are some uh, bullet points. You can make print screen of this page. It's also going to be recorded, but this is how, this is the easy, simple stuff uh what you can do um to protect yourself on the internet uh so before we had in all browsers we had a like green lock when the page is uh with through the secure uh soccer player uh or https uh but all the all those
Chrome and uh, Firefox and all other browsers remove that as like, it's not necessary anymore. Everyone is on uh, HTTPS, but still there are some pages that are not. So you will see not secure in the in the address bar if you are visiting the page uh, that doesn't have secure uh, socket layer on. And you will you need to be very careful about those sites because the communication there is clear text, which means that anyone that's listening uh, or has a possibility to listen can read your communication in plain text, so it's readable. Uh, activate two-factor authentication on any any service that you can, and I really cannot stress this enough. This is really good measure really simple measure and nowadays it's very simple i mean you can choose sms or application uh, and you can have one application that's going to authenticate you all of the places so it's really easy uh, to have that uh, and you also get the benefit for example if you're using sms as a two-factor authentication uh, when someone managed to get hands on your credentials and try to log in somewhere you'll get SMS. And if you haven't expected that SMS or in the application, you haven't expected a uh, two-factor pop-up that will uh, show, then you know that your account is breached. Your details are have leaked somewhere. Uh, use complex passwords and use password managers to store them. Nowadays, you really don't need to remember all the passwords like we need to do before. There are so many good uh, password uh, managers out, out there. Choose one that fits your need, needs. Um, I mean, you need to remember only one password, and that's the your master password. Everything else, those are going to get, generate for you. You will have browser extensions that helps you log into the pages you don't have to do yourself. Uh, so you really don't need to remember any password. But if you do, if you need those passwords, then a long, as long a password as possible is the best uh, approach regarding passwords because uh it will be also easier for you to write it down so three words password is much better than one big word with a lot of special characters numbers and so on uh and it will have a bigger effect for the attacker because it will take a longer time to crack uh do not reuse passwords i cannot uh, reiterate this one uh password using is really bad uh, because all of us are using more or less the same services so when your mailbox uh, when your facebook account has for example, one password, and you are you're using that password for mail and everything else. For people, it's really easy to find your mail from the Facebook, find uh, all other services that you might have, or just brute force them with that login and password and see what, what sticks. Uh, do not click on the suspicious links uh, or open the suspicious mail and email attachments. If you receive mail that you haven't expected with the, mail, with the link that calls you um, to visit it, be always wary what that link uh where that link leads to uh there are nice services that might help you so you can for example uh copy that link and uh, paste on other services but still you are interacting with it and uh, you want to avoid that uh, all the at all times it's also the same thing with the email attachments do not open the documents uh from the people you don't know a uh, lot of the lot of the malware attacks can be actually uh, has a source from the phishing links or the ma malware links or from the mail attachments with the word documents that have macros in, in them. And those macros can, without your interaction, as soon as you open the document, uh, connect to the internet, uh, pick up the payload and execute it on your computer without it, you even noticing anything. Uh, avoid disclosing personal information. Uh, this one is really good because as as little as you can have on the on the internet publicly available, it's really good because uh, when the attackers are doing uh, spare phishing campaigns, they are trying to find as much information about you, how they can use that information against you, what they can do, and uh, how they can uh, exploit that. So they are really uh, clever in finding uh, different ways um how to exploit that for example I, one of the really brilliant attacks that i've seen lately was uh when uh, the companies are trying to um when they when the companies for, like we are product companies uh that have a lot of developers they are trying to attract that those developers with a uh, very interesting uh, offers and then they send them a code that they should do like a test 
for the for the job they are applying to. But that code is actually malware. But no antivirus system is going to trigger it because it's not yet compiled. So when the um, when the developer receives it and starts trying to do, to do the task that they uh, should do, uh, then they get the computer infected or the network infected, and uh, then it's already late. Uh, keep your programs and operating systems up to date. Uh, yeah, this one is really, really that simple. For example, if we take a look, Tietober attack, uh, the la one of the big last one attacks that we had, um, attackers managed to exploit the uh, bug in, or the unpatched uh, VPN uh, appliance their side to get into their uh, environment and uh, laterally spread. So it's really important to have all your computers. I mean, I know it's usually a hassle the computer wants to restart or the browser wants to restart but at the end of the day when you're done with your work just restart everything and uh, you'll be fine nothing more or less needs uh, to be completely secure on that one uh, avoid using public wi-fi networks uh, if you don't know who controls the network assume it's compromised uh, public networks like mcdonald's stuff like that uh, train stations so on uh, assume they, they are compromised uh, because it's very easy to compromise those and you don't have control or you don't know who have control. So avoid them. Uh, people think also that, okay, I'm going to use VPN uh, while accessing those, but before you have VPN on, uh, your computer is already sending information before the VPN is uh, managed to connect and uh, hackers can grab that information and maybe use it against you. It depends on what kind of information it is. Uh, let's talk about security as a shared responsibility. Um, this is what we are doing one, or this is actually a part of the things that we are doing for, for you. So we have daily data protection. We have uh, backups. Good backup without restore is nothing. Uh, it's just a letter in the paper. So we are testing restores uh, see every single day. Um, we have uh, very good backup strategies with the backups on site for fast recovery. We have them off site. Then we have uh, them immutable so they cannot be overwritten and so on. So this is really, really important. Then we have a strict access control about who can access your data, who can work with your data. And um, that access is really uh, important for us. So if you need to know something about if you're working with a customer, then you will have uh, access to that customer, but otherwise you won't. Uh, we are investing a lot, uh, thanks to the Visma uh, and resources we get from the Visma as well. But we're investing a lot in the code quality. So we are scanning our code uh, for both security issues. We are scanning our code for the possible uh, libraries uh, that have been uh, not uh, updated. Uh, we are scanning our code for uh, different kind of problems that might might occur uh, both. Uh, while writing the code and after. Uh, and then we have really good monitoring and uh, testing. So we have both internal and external monitoring on the different kind of things. Uh, at the moment, we have about 30,000 monitoring points, uh, which all collect information that help us to protect you. Uh, when we talk about what you can do, I mean, you can apply the basic security uh, hygiene the, from the previous slide. Uh, it will really bring you a long way ahead. Uh, you can ask for more from your suppliers and partners. You can ask uh, to see their routines, to see their backup strategy, to see how they uh, work with the security. Are they working with the security reactive or proactive? Uh, because if you are working reactive, then it means you're too slow. You need to work proactive. You need to be step ahead attacker and see and think, try to think in all possible ways they can, uh, they are thinking to exploit you because they are really, they have unlimited resources while usually security is like resource that get money when the problem is there, but then usually it's, it's too late. IRP and BCP, you need to have a good incident response plan and business continuity plan. What happens if your supplier uh, is uh, breached, what happens to your customers, what do you need to do then, uh, uh, how fast 
get back uh, with a with a selling uh, of the products. How fast can you uh, get back with the customer support and everything else? And the last but not the least is education. You need to have uh, at least basic security um, uh, education uh, between your employees and in your company uh, because this helps a lot. Uh, employee that understands the risks is much uh, less eager to go goes than those risks. So they will actually be a security ambassador for you and it will help you to keep your security uh, higher, much higher. Uh, here I just listed a few services which are really good to know, uh, especially if you are uh, in the position where you are responsible for the security of the company. Uh, first one is Have I Been Pawned? Uh, it's a really good service which collects uh, password, uh, which collects the password list uh, of all breach sites um, that are publicly available or privately. And then they put them in the big database uh, so you can search for your mail account or for your e whole email domain, or you can set up notification for your whole email domain and get note when, for example, service has been breached, Adobe has been breached, these details have leaked out and so on. Uh, then you have the hashed. Uh, the hashed is more or less the same, but the difference is it's uh, more focused on the searching of the dark web. So you can see, for example, on dark web, this account has been sold uh, with this password. Then you can uh, check if the password is still being used, changed as soon as possible, see if it's being reused somewhere else. And that way, um, that way, secure the account and do a proper investigation uh, if something else has been uh, breached with that account. Recorded future. Uh, is a good service which helps you monitor your dark to monitor darkware for your data. Um, they can monitor anything from the domain to the keywords, uh, and they're really, really good. And then uh, the last one is Security Trails, which is a part of the recorded future, but this one helps you uh, to see your footprint on the internet. So you can see what domain and subdomains have you exposed, what uh, DNS IP addresses and everything else uh, is out there for your company. So it's really a good service that uh, uh, I can recommend. Yeah, that's about it that I had for this webinar. Do we have any questions? Uh, thank you, Omar. Uh, we uh, yeah, don't hesitate, guys, to, to write down your questions in the chat. Uh, I, uh, I reacted to something uh, you um, you um, you mentioned not click any uh, clicking any links in in un, uh, in uh, emails that you didn't suspect or expect. Mm. Uh, um, we sent out to our customers a uh, a link to our uh, file server through our CRM tool at HubSpot mm. yesterday, and uh, I got three or four answers that I'm not clicking that. That's a weird looking URL. So that's a gold star to those customers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> really good. Uh, it it kind of hurts me a bit that they doesn't that they don't trust me though, uh, since the email was coming from me. But yeah, that's fine. Uh, and also, I think that we should uh, probably uh, recommend a few uh, password managers. Absolutely. Uh, per, I'm personally using one password. Have been used it for maybe fifteen plus years uh then there are others as well equally good there is bitwarden which is open source and also available uh on all platforms then we have uh, had LastPass and a few more so i mean with those one of those will be more than good Here we got uh, Per sent us a few examples in uh, in the chat here as well. One password, Bitwarden, and LastPass. I think we'll include those in. Uh, we'll send you links in the follow up email with the recording as well. Uh, we got a question from Hilde: uh, Public Wi-Fi networks in hotels are they safe to use, or is it just restaurants and uh, and such? I would say that for me, no public network is good to use. To be honest, uh, if you have five uh, five G or four G on the phone, use that one instead. Because uh, while hotels can be 
uh, more secure, for example, than McDonald's and, and uh, fast food uh, chains. But still, you need to think from the perspective that if the attacker is staying at the hotel, they have a few days to see what they can do with that network, how they can um, how they can exploit it, and so on. So, really, uh, if I if I can, I'm not using any any of the networks. Yeah. So try to avoid public in general. Uh, um, so eHub mentioned that LastPass was hacked some time yes. ago. Yes, yeah. that's true. Uh, they have been hacked, but they're working against the current, so they are really working hard on it. Uh, that's also why I was a bit reluctant to recommend them because I know they have been hacked, and uh, uh, but they, yeah, they have improved a bit since then. Uh, but for example, I know that one password and Bitwarden haven't been hacked so far, um, and they are really open with their what they are doing regarding the security and everything else. Uh, so those two I can definitely recommend. It would it be is it a risk like to communicate what you do with your security to like do you disclose any information that can be utilized by a a dark hat or black hat uh, person well it's always you need to think uh, in uh, from the attacker perspective what is he going to be able to do with that information i mean if you say that you are working proactive with security what does it say to, to the attacker nothing uh, i mean a lot of the companies are using different kind of services uh, for the code analysis and so on and that's publicly known so i don't think that you you don't want to ex to to give too much information of course but i think that we can be open uh, with what we are doing security wise okay uh do we have any other questions uh any final questions before we uh before we say thank you to amar for today uh, it doesn't seem like we're getting any questions, so uh, then that's it, I guess, for us today. Um, good that you joined us, and uh, I'm not sure if you saw that or we sent an email out to our customers yesterday that we're uh, we're adding to FA. Uh, that becomes mandatory from June 1st for uh, for our accounts, uh, which is a, a step in our in our measures to increase security and uh, our customers uh, on protecting our customers data uh, going forth uh, do you have any final notes on that amar or no um it's we are we have tried to to make the process very simple so we just need uh, more in, in the end we just need phone number from the customers that have account and that's everything that we need uh, to to make this change happen and the customer won't see too big difference either when logging in, uh, they will just receive an extra prompt where they need to write a code that they get in the SMS. That's about it. So it's really simple. And in case someone managed to get a hold on their details, their account details, they will receive SMS uh, with a code and they know if they haven't asked for that code, then something is amiss. Yep, and then you have um, time to act on. Absolutely. Impact. Yeah, perfect. Uh, okay, uh, well, I think that's it for today then. Uh, thanks for joining in and uh, we will uh, send you some uh, useful links uh, afterwards uh, via email. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.